This is Umar for Box Nation. We're back from Riyadh uh, in London. You made it back in one piece, Frank, which is good to see. Just about. <laughs> Just about. Was, I'll tell you what, what an exciting evening. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Took a, a lot of you know, energy out of all of us. I think it was a busy week, but of course the fighters themselves um, produced a great night, as you said. Let's start with what everyone's talking about, the main event. Anthony Joshua, devastating, destructive. Is that how you describe it? Absolutely. I mean... You know, I said that fight. Whoever lands the most, you know, the first significant shot, I fancied would really win it. And he'd done it very early, obviously, in the first round and repeated that shot twice in the second round and done a, done a job on him. And you see him when he's warming up in the dressing room, he was practising it. So, obviously, they worked out their game plan and it obviously worked for him and uh, he'd done that in style. And I've got to tell you, there's a lot of fighters who had he had caught him with that shot, the, it would have been the same thing. You know, some of the newspapers today, they've been quite negative, which is ridiculous, complaining about uh, some of the feature writers saying that, that you know, like saying Nagano's nothing. Well, we knew Nagano could fight because he showed it against Tyson. And, you know, he did, he did, he did what he had to do, uh, Joshua. I thought he'd done it in, in tremendous style. When you look at his last two performances uh, against Otto Valin, quality heavyweight and Francis Garner who's someone who gave Tyson Fury a really tough fight um, he seems to be on the road back right to the very top would you agree with that? He's on the road back he's not fighting at the very top I mean the guys are not the, you know they're not the the best fighters but he's done everything he's, he should be doing and doing it in style and he's got himself back up there in, certainly into contention the big fight will take place on the 18th of May and that'll be Tyson against the guy who beat AJ twice in Usyk. So that's going to be a very interesting fight. I fancy my man to win. And at the end of the day, we will we'll see how it all pans out after that. In the meantime, AJ, I'm certain, is going to keep himself busy, as are the other guys in the who've appeared in Saudi and fought on the card out there. There's two, two fighters who are now mandatory challenges for their respective organisations. That's Hergovic, and that's also now... Um, Joe Parker, who's now the uh, interim WBO champion. We'll talk about Zhang and Parker in a second, but again with, with Joshua, even though he'd beat Hellenius and Franklin before these two fights in Saudi, there were still a lot of questions around his mentality, the performances in those fights, but Ben Davison and, and the team there seem to have bought something else out in, in Anthony. looks comfortable. Well, as I said you know, at the start of the interview, they... You could see the sh what they were practicing in the uh, dressing room, and that's the shot he caught him with. He caught him with the same shot three times, three knockdowns were all the same, the same punch, and they and they've always him and Ben have obviously struck up a really good rapport, and it, it's working out for them. So he's brought something to AJ, and uh, we'll see how it, you know. Hopefully, he continues to do that until he fights Tyson. Would you say he's the third best heavyweight in the world at the moment, Joshua? Um. He's up there. He's up there. He's up there. Whether he's the third, I don't know. You know, he's certainly in the top five. No doubt about that. Okay. No doubt about that. Well, someone else who is in the top five for sure is Joseph Parker, um, and we can now put it out there that he's on the books with Queensbury. He's your fighter. Um, just tell us about that. Look, he's done, he done tremendously well against uh, Zhang. A lot of people fancied Zhang. I thought he'd be okay, but you know, Zhang after seven rounds, rounds. Um, he just sort of faded a bit, but but that's also, obviously Joe was pressing him and working hard. So Joe done a, done really well again against a, a world class fighter. A lot of people, who've, a lot of people were saying was probably the most dangerous bloke out there for, or fighter out there for the winner of the uh, fight between Tyson and Usyk, and he done it in style. You know, he come through it in style, getting off the floor twice. I mean, he was down twice, wasn't he? Twice, like, yeah. So he done it extremely well. And I'm pleased for him. He's a lovely fella. And as I say, he's got himself back into, really, not put back into, he's continued to push himself up up the rankings, beating good good fighters. I mean, he's be beating guys who are number one, you know, in, in, in their respective um, organisations. And, you know, it, it, that fight was for the interim title. And he's now the interim champion and, and mandatory challenger. He's definitely in the top five, isn't he, Joe Parker? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. And as I said at the start, um, signed with yourself now as well, Frank. With Sorry? Queen, signed with yourself now as well with Queensbury, Joe Parker. Joe Parker's uh, with us, yeah. He's on there and the, he's, you know, and the whole team's all work. We're all working together. 
uh, him, Gold Star ourselves, all working together with uh, with the with um, Seller to deliver him another big fight. Mm. In terms of Zhilai Zhang, um, there's always questions around his, his gas tank. Didn't see that against Joe Joyce because he finished both those fights inside the distance. Um, but it was quite evident. I'm not taking anything away from Joseph Park, who boxed a great fight and is really doing well under Andy Lee uh, in his last two fights, especially with Wilder and, and Zhang. But it did seem like Zhang, who had a really good start, did fade away and slow down, didn't really offer anything towards the end. He did slow down a bit, you know, and I think he pressed him. But look, if he's going to come back, he's going to have to rectify that. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. You know, it, Joe Parker, he, seemed to, he seem, seems, you know, in his last few fights to find a way to win against guys that he's going in, going in with. As, as I don't think he was the favourite in either of those last two fights. Definitely he's not. He's done what he's had to do. So that's brilliant. Yeah. In terms of uh, Zhang, have you had contact with uh, the Lanes who, who manage him about that rematch clause where he's going well, to activate it? There's a rematch it? clause, and if they call, call for it to happen, it'll happen. Do you think he will re, uh, will activate that rematch clause? I'm quite sure he'll want to get his revenge, that's for sure. Mm. I'm quite sure of that. So we'll see what happens. As I say, you know, we've got, um, I think it's about 10 days or so before they've got to make their decision, so we'll see what happens. Even if you take a loss in Saudi Arabia like Zhang has, uh, we've seen people can come back and you can still be in big fights though, Frank. Joe Joyce done the same thing. He got stopped by... Joe Parker, you mean? Done sorry, uh, Joe, Joe Parker did the same thing, getting stopped by Joe Joyce and resurrected his career. AJ's resurrected his career. It, it happens. You know, if they get the opportunity to come back, make some tweaks and so forth... It's not the end of the world, is it? It's not the end of the world. A defeat isn't. It doesn't mean your career is over. I think perhaps uh, before the Riyadh season came into boxing, I think a loss meant a little bit more. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think what's what's happened here is that you know what you what wouldn't happen, you know, may not happen, is that because because of the Riyadh season, because of the the finances and the quality of the shows and the undercards. You can get guys back in with big fights. When you're doing it over here or sometimes in the States, it's difficult to do so. But we did that with um, with Daniel Dubois after the fight. You know, we, we took him over there, you know, and he put in a tremendous performance and got himself back in the swing. So, you know, a loss isn't the end of the world. Absolutely. Well, um, Nick Bull, I'm sure, felt like had a loss, uh, had a split decision draw against Ray Vargas, but... I've not spoke to one person who thought Nick Ball didn't win that fight. Frank. Nor have I. I mean, he won the fight, there's no doubt about it. He lost the first four rounds. Definitely lost that. Fifth round, pretty even. Um, but he came back and he won, he won, he won. I thought, the rest of the rounds. And not only did he win them, there was two knockdowns there. Two significant knockdowns, which were 10 8 rounds. And how that Italian judge made that score, scored it two rounds in favour of. Uh, of, of Vargas. Vargas is beyond me. You know, <clears throat> they're talking, you know, we talked to Mauricio about the big fight that they wanted to get extra judges in. They want to get uh, the equivalent of a VAR situation film at ringside. Let's get a judge, let's get the three judges in there first. Right. You know, it's ridiculous what's going down. And if a judge gets it, makes such a, a balls up that affects, seriously affects a fighter's career which it has in Nick I mean you know that, that was terrible he should be sitting sitting at home now in Liverpool as the world champion having beat the best featherweight in the world that's where he should be should be doing and it was he was basically wronged and that judge they should do what they do in football in premiership you have a bad performance you're relegated you go down you go down a division these guys they, they're out again in a couple of weeks time Judging another fight, you want to make that. You want to don't worry about getting VAR in. Get the competent officials in. If they screw up, there should be consequences for them because there's consequences for the boxer whose careers they can wreck. Did you speak to that judge? No, I didn't. I, uh, probably best I hadn't have as well. So how did you score it? The, the fight with Bull. I thought he won it by about three rounds at least. I know one judge gave it to him size six rounds, but I, I generally thought it's the worst case it was three rounds. Worst case. And I could give it, and you could give him six rounds, but 
I'm talking about the worst case scenario. That's what it was. He won that fight. It took him those first four rounds, five rounds, to actually work out. And imp I mean, he was imposing himself all the way through him, but to get his rhythm. And once he got his rhythm going, that fellow was on the back foot all the way through. He's like a mini Mike Tyson, isn't he, Nick Ball? He is. He's got a tremendous engine and he doesn't let up. He's got tremendous belief. He's got a really good trainer. Really good, really good manager in Paul Stevenson. They've done a fabulous job between all of them, and it's such a it's such a bloody travesty of justice that it, they didn't get their just rewards. Well, Nick showed he's a, a world class fighter. Obviously, one of the best featherweights in the world. Off that performance, um, do you now push for a rematch with Vargas? Well, what happened was that they they've got an interim champion, and the winner had to fight the interim champion. So we will see what happens. I'm going to speak to Mauricio today and lobby on his behalf, but whatever happens, we'll be with him and he'll get another shot at the world title. Is uh, Mauricio going to look at some of the officiating on that fight or that, well, that judge who had Frey Vargas? I, I, I'm going to strongly advise him to, and I'm sure the Boxing Board of Control, who were uh, there, um, uh, there uh, as the, uh, the, 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 the uh, home... Um, commission on behalf of the Saudis. I'm sure there's going to be some complaints coming in from them regarding the, the scoring. What about what I found strange about that card, um, the one that gave it to Vargas, is that that judge, if you took the two 10 8 rounds away from Nick Ball, then he's got like a, a massive wide lead on, on Vargas over Nick Six Ball in that rounds. fight. Yeah. Well, that, that tells you all you need to know, doesn't it? That doesn't make sense. It does not sense because the fella doesn't know what he's looking at. Have you spoke to Nick? I spoke to him a couple of times. Yeah, is he okay? Yesterday. He's disappointed, and he's. Uh, but it's funny, you know. You can get guys who scream and scream. That's not his style. He seems very philosophical about it, and he knows in himself that he is. Beat by beating Vargas, he is the best featherweight in the world because he beat the best featherweight. If the rematch doesn't happen uh, with Vargas, there are some massive fights there still. We've got Lee yeah. Wood in this country, Josh Warrington perhaps. Yeah. Uh, Eddie's just had a new world champion in Raymond Ford from America. Those all fights for Nick Ball? There's lots of opportunities for Nick and we'll make sure that he gets one of them, that's for sure. Whatever happens, whether it be the rematch or whatever happens. And, you know, when, I made, when, when we made that match, I knew it'd be tough, but I fancied him or I wouldn't have made the match. I fancied him to win the fight, and it's just such a shame that he, he didn't get it. And you know, whatever happens now, we, we're with him, and we'll make sure that he gets his, he gets the opportunity to prove yet again he's the best featherweight out there. Well, he's clearly got a, a bright future ahead of him. Oh, without a doubt. Because yeah. he, he's been fantastic for a long time, but until you go to that level, you don't quite know whether they sit there. Well, he showed it against Isaac Dogbo the way you know the way that fight went and what he did in that fight. When you look at, you know, how the level that Dogbo's fought at, it just gets better and better. But I think Vargas is a step above. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. At that step, he jumps up there and yeah. he's gone up again. Yeah. And there's, no, there's been no problem with it. He's done it in style. Yeah. yeah. Right, let's talk about a real success uh, from the night, Mr. Mark Chamberlain, someone not that you only promote but manage as well. Have we, uh, before we come on to the win against Gavin Gwynn, have we found out why His Excellency loves him so much? I think he loves him so much because you see the performance he put in. <laughs> you know, it was for Gav Gavin, it was a terrible eye, eye injury he got in the first round. He never got over that. But, but, but having said that, Mark was, you know, he was punch perfect. I mean, it was a tremendous performance. And uh, that was a platform for both those guys to show what they're all about. And Mark came through and showed what he was all about. Do you think you've got a world class fighter in Mark? Chandler? I know he's a world class fighter. It's a tough division. He is a world-class fighter, there's no doubt about it. Uh, was his excellency impressed? Very much so, very much so. And I'm quite sure you're going to see him on future cards out there. Well, yeah, I was, on, I was sitting near Mark on the, on the plane back and he was saying, I've got the green light to come back to Saudi. Yep, he has, he has, and, uh, but he earned it. Yeah. You know, he was in the right place at the right time. But then once he got in the ring, he went and done what he had to do to say that he deserved to be there. And he'd and he, he done it in style. Um, have you spoke to Gavin Gwynn's thing about his I eye? See, I spoke to him at the airport and I told him, and his dad, I said, don't worry, you know, we'll we'll sort something out when you're ready to go down the road. I think he had, uh, uh, he said he was he was getting a lot of pain and he felt something wasn't right clicking. 
So he may have done some, hopefully he hasn't, but he may have done some some damage to his to the orbital. Like Dubois yeah. had. Yeah, I hope he hasn't, but that's the way it was sounded. And then he obviously went off to the doctors to, I think he's going today or whenever it was to you know get it examined. I mean, it closed up really quick. During the terrible, fight. terrible. I mean, it's, it's te- God knows what it looks like today. I mean, credit to Mark Chamberlain, though, landed a, yeah. a perfect punch on it. Yeah, yeah. And, and a credit to Gavin to carrying on as long uh, as he could. He's a warrior. We know that about yeah, Gavin Gwynn. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, and also, it's a shame it could be for the European title, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't sanction, sanction it. it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's good to see that Mark Chamberlain impressed out there, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a, a big fight again for him next. There will be, yeah. Okay. Anything else from the card that you want to pick out, Frank? No, I just, I thought overall, I thought it was a, it was a really good fight. There was good fights on there. The, the that that WBA title fight, that was a cracking little Madrimov. fight. Madrimov. That was a good little fight. Um, I enjoyed that. I mean, it was, it was a, it was an excellent card, excellent night of boxing. Have uh, any media outlets complained about the uh, atmosphere yet in Saudi? <laughs> well, look, first of all, I mean, the atmosphere wasn't bad. It was, it was good out there. There was, yeah. you know, especially, I mean, all the crowd complained as well about um, Nick's the result. And remember, they had a football match on as well. Was it, was it Egypt, Egypt? Egypt played, yeah. Yeah, they, they brought that match in, uh, which was quite a big match in that region. Um, so there was, you know, there was... Uh, a lot of people went to the match and then came on to the boxing, but it was it was terrific. I thought the atmosphere was good. I thought the fights were good. And you have to respect their culture. You know, they're, they're all junk, you know, jump about like they've, they've, they've had a, a drink, which they don't do there, but like they're all, all booze and singing and shouting. People, but that's that their culture is a different culture to ours. And they they enjoy it and they sit and watch it. And the one, and the one thing about them, they're all neutrals. You know, they're, they're not. They, they they support the. As the fight goes on, they get behind whatever fighter they choose to like, and I, and I just thought I thought it was I thought it was excellent and certainly a good atmosphere for the big fight. That's true. Apart from the one fight, Azizo, the Saudi fight, they were right behind him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, they would be. Um, did Jose enjoy his night? Did you talk to him at all? No, no, no. He's. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't get a chance, mate. I mean, I, you know, we, we've got a good manager, Arteta. He'll do us. We're happy with him. Yeah, but Jose's been there and done it, so he's been there, been there and done it. And uh, you know, we're, anyway, I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but anyway, um, <laughs> no, we're, we're I'm delighted. We're top of the league. In terms of uh, Ronaldo, though, I saw you had a picture of him, so you had a couple of words with him. The, the original Ronaldo, that yeah, is. the original. One. So funny thing, I've got a great, I've got. Um, Somebody's gave me a present with you know the old signed shirt, but he signed boots of a match from years and years ago, and so uh, yeah, it was nice. That's the first time I met him. It was nice to meet him, and he enjoyed it. He loved the fights. He enjoyed it. Yeah, it's good to see the, the two worlds meeting actually, because a lot of these guys in football are massive boxing fans. They are, they are, and uh, and and they do enjoy it, and, and do enjoy it. And I'll just uh, yeah, it was, I'll, I'll tell you what, it was just an entertaining, exciting card. It's great, it's great, and if you're a boxing fan, that's that's what it's all about. I actually, do want to ask you, just going back to Joshua, and what you you know, you had a situation there where Eddie Earn is promoters there. You had Tyson Fury, Paris, uh, his missus there, yourself. Like, what was the re- we can we were on the opposite side. So, what were the reactions once Joshua obviously took France and Ghana out from everyone? Well, we were cheering him on, obviously. If you asked uh, Eddie, I'd tell you that uh, Tyson was cheering him on. So was I. We got, be, you know, we got behind him, and it was uh, it was good that he won because obviously it sets up a, a an exciting fight down the lo- line with the winner of the fight on May eighteenth. Absolutely. To be fair, I heard um, Eddie was cheering for Nick Ball, your fighter, when he was yeah, in this fight. Yeah, he did. He got behind him. Yeah. God, who would have thought you'd be cheering for Joshua and he'd well, be cheering you for go. your fighters? I don't think we've done it because of that. I just think that's the natural thing, and yet to be got behind the Brits. Yeah, yeah, it that's makes what sense. It was makes sense. Okay, well, we move on from Riyadh to Birmingham uh, this week. A stacked card. You're going again with the Magnificent Seven. Uh, let's start with the, the heavyweight fight on the card. Joe Joyce is back. Obviously, good to see him back in the ring. How would you respond to criticism about the, the fight with Cash Alley, Frank? Well, I don't understand. What's the criticism? He's, he's had two losses. And he's coming back off of two losses. For me, I, I, you know, let the man get back in the ring and get, get his mojo going again. Cash Alley fancies it. You know, he's coming up with two losses. So, you know, that's it, it's for me, it's a chance for Joe to get yourself back in the swing. And if he comes through, he'll want a much bigger fight after that. There's no doubt about it. 
Do you think he can get involved in the Saudi scene? If he keep, if he keeps winning, he, look, the man he beat is top of the pops at the moment in Joe Parker. He beat him, stopped him. Mm. It happens. You know, you go back a few fights, AJ, he was a little bit out in the wilderness, wasn't he? He's, he's, he's got himself well and truly back into the, uh, into, into the mix. Right, just go through the card quickly. So uh, Nathan Heaney, after a fantastic win over Denzel Bentley, uh, defends yeah. his British title against Brad Pauls. Now this is not an easy fight. No, it's Heaney. not. I think both he's undefeated, aren't? He? Pauls, I think, has a has a loss, but he's a good one fight. loss. Yeah, but yeah. but they've got good records, and I think it's a reverse situation when where um, when Nathan fought um, against um, uh, Denzel. Denzel that um, his opponent. Is in is in his position, so again, it, there's a lot of pressure on Nathan to come through. But he's got his army of fans are going to be there, so you can imagine what the atmosphere is going to be like. And if he comes through this, he's going to get a big, big fight at Stoke City's ground. What was the issues around having a fight there? I know you were trying to get a fight at the ground there. What was there an issue? There? I don't know. I was having some work or something done at the ground, so hopefully uh, that's all dealt with now. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked about the Joyce Ali. We talked about um, Heaney Pauls. Pierce O'Leary is in a he's tough fight. He's a good fight. fighter, Pierce. You know, he's a very, very good fighter, and I'm looking forward to seeing him in action. You know, this is uh, he's he's back in he's back in there. He's in a decent fight, and if he comes through that, he can get himself into some seriously good fights by the end of the year. I mean, these kind of fights now, really, for someone like Pierce O'Leary and all the guys on these cards, they impress. They can get themselves, you know, at the table at Riyadh season, can't they? Yeah, I mean, they can get it. If not, and if they don't, they'll get big fights here. We'll make them happen. You know, we've invested a lot of time, a lot of money in these youngsters, and they're all gradually coming through. And Nick Ball, um, who should be a world champion today, um, he, he showed he showed how it can be done and what can happen if you if you dedicate and dedicate yourself and you know follow it all the way through to, and take the advantage of the. The opportunities, the opportunities that we present for them. I think the one that fight fans are really looking forward to. Oh, who's that ringing you? Oh, I fucking get that. Oh, God. Is that your missus after it was her birthday? And you yeah, didn't get her anything. It's in the post. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one that people are really looking forward to uh, is Dennis McCann v Brad Strand. That's a cracker. You know. Um, Dennis, I mean, most people know Brad comes from uh, the same stable as Nick Ball, similar similar sort of style. Um, again, same manager, Paul Stevenson, same trainer, and uh, that's a that's a, a unbelievably good fight. That I'm looking forward to that. Bit of pressure on Dennis as well. He's had that draw yeah. with Baluta. Yeah, well, it is pressure on him, but you know he's uh, he's moved trainer again. And we'll see where we we'll see we we'll see where he goes with it. But he's he's uh, he's up for it, and so's Brad. I know Brad's really up for it. I was talking to him out in Saudi. He was out there with Nick. Mm. Ethan James against Cooper. Um, yeah, Ethan James probably a step up from this fight. It is. It is a big step up for him. And again, he's you know he's he's got it all to all to you know he won't be out there wanting to show that he's uh, he's um, one to to be reckoned with, and he, and he's he, and he can do it. He's an excellent young fighter. Excellent young fight, and he's going to got he's got quite a bit of support in that area too. And lastly, to round off the card, Zach Parker back in action as well. Yeah, Zach gets in there if he does the business. He'll have a big fight in the summer, big fight. Really? Yep. But he's got to win first. He's got to come through. I think fight. I know what you're getting at there, but we'll we'll leave that one for another day. Okay, maybe. we'll leave it for another day. <laughs> I think I know what you're getting at. Um, yeah. So that's last week covered. This week covered. Um, in terms of the Riyadh season, the two events that we've got coming up. Let's just go through that. May 18th. Is this the, the fight of the 21st century? Oh, without a doubt. Four belts on the line. Two undefeated heavyweights. It is the fight of this century. Mm. I mean, we just were out there with Tyson and Riyadh. Um, his shape looked like he was fight ready already. Would you say that? Well, he is. I mean, you've got to think his fight was, was what, postponed? Three weeks ago, wasn't it? Four yeah, weeks and, he's, and he, he was in tremendous shape. Tremendous, the best shape I think he's been in, um, and he was—he he was actually showing me some photographs while we were out there, uh, of him, you know, of him, with the sparring and so forth. And he looked magnificent. And he'd be—I think he'd be even in better shape now. He's obviously got a 
take his foot off the gas, but then he'll start training by the end of the month. Well, he's in training, but he'll get into his serious training at the end of the month. And then he's got to train and get himself up to peak condition for the 18th of May, but he's not got to shift a load of weight, that's for sure. Do you like it a little bit that people are writing him off again? I don't get it. I don't understand it. But you know what? Who cares? Just get on with a fight. He's fighting the guy that beat, that beat AJ twice, whose cred, cred, credentials are impeccable as an amateur, as a cruiserweight, undefe, undefe, undefeated and un, un, a unified cruiserweight champion. And he holds three belts and two, two wins over, over our guy, AJ, our Brit. Yeah, I mean, I think of the, the last two performances of Anthony and obviously um, Tyson's last performance in Garner, yeah, the, the, the odds are probably shortening on that fight with Alexander Usyk. Yeah, well, people will look at Tyson's last performance and that's where they, where they are. Let them, I think that if they think that's Tyson, I think they're looking at, um, you know, they're going to misjudge, misjudge him. You know, there was a lot... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a lot of things going on which I'm not going to go into a bit of that regarding before the Nagano fight, but no one's complaining about it. He got on with it, and he had a bad night at the office. But when you have a bad night and you win, that tells you what you're all about as a champion. That's what he did. He had a bad night in the office. I've seen people have bad nights at the office and they don't win. That's the difference. He's a winner. With the the two-way rematch clause. I know a lot of people are clamouring for after this fight with Fury Usyk, get Joshua in the winner, but I personally don't see that with the two-way rematch clause being there, Frank. Well, the rematch clause is there and the rematch clause is there for a reason and uh, and both the fighters, you know, are getting exceptionally well paid. So, for if for, I mean, I obviously fancy Tyson to win, so Usyk, if that is the case, will be clamouring for his rematch. There's no doubt about that. It's a huge amount of money there unless something dramatic happens. But that doesn't stop these guys, you know, AJs and the other fighters, the Hergovichs and the, and the Daniel Dubois and Joe Parker, who's the interim champion of the WBO now. It doesn't stop them continuing to fight and, and cement their place as being the, the mandatory challenger for their respective titles. So the winner of the fight between Tyson and Usyk. Just get your reaction to this clip. I'm just going to play it here. You'll, you'll be able to hear it. Probably the best knockout I've ever seen live. I mean, heavyweight division, AJ, sharpshooter, best heavyweight in the world, baddest motherfucker on the planet, all of that stuff. This guy's going to beat everybody and um, he's, he's back better than ever. What, what do you think Frank Warren and Tyson Fury are thinking? They know. No, that, you always back yourself. Tyson Fury isn't thinking, oh, AJ beats me. He, he back himself to beat anyone. And we're going to back AJ to be anyone, but they know. They know this guy is back and he's a major, major problem. Is that Eddie? That was Eddie. Well, look, he's selling his man. And, he, and it was a cracking knockout, a, cro a cracking stoppage. But it wasn't a one-punch. I mean, it's a one-punch knockout for the third knockdown. Um, and he'd done a tremendous job. Um, but let's get it right. Tyson's fighting the guy that beat him twice he said he's a major problem and they know about it is he a major problem well, he's a major problem if he catches you on the chin but then again then I think well, I know that Tyson's a major problem for AJ well on that note Frank Warren thank and you very we'll much we'll find out oh, go on. we'll find out in time because I want that fight to happen I want to do that because I've said I've not just said it since this fight I said it before the fight it's a fight I want to see because I'd like to Tyson to prove what well, I've always said, that he is the best. I think he approved on the 18th that he is, without a doubt, the best heavyweight in the world, even though he is the lineal champion. And I, and I feel he's the best fight, best heavyweight in the world. But he'll certainly prove he's the best heavyweight in Britain if they meet. OK. Well, Frank Warren, appreciate your time at the headquarters. And uh, I'll see you in Birmingham on Thursday. I will see you, my son, as I always say. When you're looking, looking at me. At you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good man. <laughs>